Hey everyone, happy Friday, we are live. I am so excited to do this uh, project tutorial with you. Might, we might do more than one shirt today, um, but I'm really excited to show you how printable HTV works and give you some tips on making the most out of your project. So let me know, um, first of all, if you can see me and if you can hear me, and I'm gonna make sure that I have shared this across um, our Facebook groups so everybody can join us. So give me just one second and we're going to go ahead and get started. Also, if you have any questions, um, leave them in the comments. I'm going to try really hard to keep an eye on the comments and make sure I can answer those questions for you. So Krista is watching from uh, Houston as her cricket cuts the giant sunflower from the DIY Alex Spring Farmhouse Mist Rocks. I cannot wait to try um, Alex's uh, sunflower. I was talking with her earlier this week because one of the projects we're going to be making in the Spring Cricket Craft Challenge it are paper flowers too, but I wanted to make sure we weren't doing the same project because um, I was fading between sunflower and another flower. And I went with the other flower and I'm so glad that I did because Alex's sunflower is way better than the one that I gave up with. So if you haven't checked out that video, check out DIY Alex's channel. I think it's her most recent video. It is a good one for sure. Uh, Nancy is from Minnesota, I think. I don't know. <laughs> My state abbreviations are off. So if it's not Minnesota, let me know. And Liberty is watching from Long Beach, Mississippi. Hello, Shabri. Okay, well, I think we're gonna get started. Um, I believe everybody can hear me. So first, let's go ahead and go over um, what we're gonna make. So this was a shirt that I made yesterday just to try out the different settings because I'm gonna be using the new um, StarCraft 8 one heat press. So I wanted to make sure that I had um, the pressure and everything set in. But this is so fun. I want to show, I wonder if you can see. Okay, I'm gonna put this up close. Can you? Maybe not. I'm see if you can see. So you can see the fibers in the printable HTV. Um, one of the tough things with printable HTV is that you do need a lot of pressure for it, more for the light materials than the dark materials, but you still need quite a bit of pressure for the dark material HTV. Um, so that is one thing to be aware of. Make sure that you have uh, some pretty firm pressure if you're using um, a heat press. I have not done printable HTV with an easy press. I was thinking maybe we can try that later today. Um, but I did have some people want um, to see how this heat press works. So I'm going to do that for the first one. And then maybe we'll do a second shirt if we have enough time. And I'll show you um, if it'll work on the easy press. So that is the first thing. Um, also, all so this design, this uh, tie-dye design, as well as the one we're using today, I have linked in the description of the video. So if you wanted to get those, they're from Design Bundles. Um, I think that they're both included in the plus membership if you have that. So um, you need a shirt, obviously. Any shirt will work. There's not really any requirements on your shirt. Um, you can do printable HTV on other materials too. For this doing shirt stick, that's what I had. And then this is the printable HTV we're using. We are using the StarCraft for dark materials. Um, this honestly is my favorite printable HTV. I was talking to Kristen about this. Was it yesterday, I think? Um, but I've tried three different brands. So I've tried the Starcraft and then I've tried one from Joanne. I can't get the name off the top of my head from the Silhouette brand. Um, and I just, both of the other two had a tough time getting a clean cut with my Cricut. And this Starcraft just cuts beautifully. So we'll go over the different cut settings um, that you want to use these with, with your um, Explore machine or your Maker machine. So there's actually two different settings depending on what machine you have. So with that, you also want to have heat transfer mask. If you're just doing one, so ours is this image, sorry, I keep going back and forth, was just one piece. So you technically don't need heat transfer mask for that, but the one we're doing today is in a few different pieces. So we definitely want the heat transfer mask. This work is basically, sorry, my camera keeps popping in and out, um, but think of this as like transfer tape for iron-on or heat transfer vinyl. So this is a larger roll. When you use this for printable HTV, like we're doing tonight, but you also use it for the pattern HTV. So 143 vinyl does does sell this large roll, and I bought a large roll because I figured I would use it as much. I would use it with everything that I do. Um, so if you if you want to do a lot of patterned HTV or printable HTV, I suggest getting the bigger roll. If you only do a project here or there, you only need to buy a sheet when you are doing the project. So, um, and then we are going to use a standard grip mat. Um, you can use a light grip mat. This is just a well used, as you can tell standard grip mat. So I suggest either a light grip mat or a well-used standard grip mat. Um, a few other things. I like to roll my shirts, no matter what type of heat I'm doing, whether it's HTV or sublimation, 
just to make sure that I get all of the fibers off of it. And then we are going, I don't need the heat resistant tape today. Sorry. Um, and then our heat source. So I am going to be using the StarCraft, like I said, the StarCraft 8 in 1 Swing Away Heat Press. Um, and I'll go over time and temperature settings um, with that here in just a bit. So since we've covered all of our materials, let me actually get everything out of the way here really quick. All right, sorry. Let's see. This camera really likes to zoom in and zoom out. But let's talk about the different, or like what designs work best with printable HTV. Because when you, when I was looking for designs, when I first tried printable HTV, I just searched sublimation designs because they're ping files. You think that they would work great with printable HTV. The only problem with some sublimation files, a lot of them have like the splatter marks or they don't have a crisp outline. So you need to remember with sublimation, you don't have to cut out the design. It's ink on the paper and you just put the full sheet of paper on your shirt or whatever you're pressing. Um, you don't have to cut it. Printable HTV, if you don't cut, so if you just take the sheet and press it on, it's going to press that white um, HTV on there. So you need to make sure that you have crisp outlines um, when you are cut, whatever design you're using that you're going to cut with your Cricut. Um, you totally can use printable HTV if you don't have a cutting machine, you would just cut the uh, design out by hand. Um, let's go ahead and I want to get my design into the sign space. I guess I do need to have my mouse. Oh, sorry. Come on. Come on. There we go. No. It like goes out of focus every time I move. Okay. So I'm going to open up design space really quick and just kind of walk you through this. So I have uploaded my image and design space. Another thing to be aware of are your size restraints when you are doing print and cut and design space. Um, so print and cut HTV is the same um, size restraints as like sticker paper. So it, the largest it can be is 6.75 by 9.25. So the design I'm using, we're going to do 6.4 by 9.1. So I, I did measure my shirt out. Um, and six inches was per was a perfect width since it's a longer design. Um, but if you have a round design, you're going to be limited to so like the smiley face, you're limited to like six and a quarter by six and or six and three quarters by six and three quarters um, for your cut size. So I have mine as big as I can do it. We are going to click make it. And then here's another thing um, that is unique about printable HTV. You do not mirror it. So it, it is just like pattern HTV because we're using the heat transfer mask to put it on. You're not having to flip it upside down to put it on. You're just putting it on your shirt flat. So you don't mirror your design. So we're just gonna, going to go ahead and click continue. And we are going to send our design to our printer. Now, I do suggest having the bleed on. Um, six months ago, I wouldn't have suggested that, but I have not been able, even though I have um, what's the word, calibrated all my Cricut machines for print and cut, I haven't been able to get a 100% perfect clean cut without bleed in a couple months. So until the print and cut issues um, figured out, do add the bleed on your design. So even if it's off by like a millimeter, you can tell the difference. I did have to cut down this shirt. I don't think where well, you can kind of, you, I won't be able to, you won't be able to see it on the camera, but I did have to cut it down a bit because I didn't have the bleed on and there was a little bit of white on there. So make sure to have the bleed on and then click use system dialog. So that way we can set our printer preferences for our printer. I have an HP printer that I use for my inkjet. Oh, that's another thing. Printable HTV is for inkjet printers only. It does not work on laser printers. So make sure if you are wanting to do printable HTV that you have an inkjet printer. So I just selected my printer and then I'm gonna change my paper type to HP matte presentation paper and my print quality from normal to best. You don't really need to change anything else here. Just click okay and we are going to print it. So it does take a minute for this to print. So hopefully, there we go, my printer's going. So does anybody have any questions? Let me check the comments really quick. Uh, Kristen says, instead of the heat transfer mask, can you use another HGB transfer sheet? Yes, you totally can. So if you're making a shirt or if you're adding like Easy Weed or uh, Softflex or something like that, and you have the transfer sheet from that, you can definitely use a transfer sheet from another piece of HTV um, to transfer that over. 
That is a great question, Kristen. Um, let's talk about cut settings while this is printing. Um, if you are, so I'm using my maker today. So if you are using a maker machine, so either the maker or the maker three, you want to use the rice paper setting. Um, let's find it here. If you are using an explore machine, you just want to use regular paper, um, notebook paper. Where is my rice? There is my rice paper. You don't need to change um, the default setting. It's totally fine. We are um, all set there. This is just about done. Nancy, wish design space would change the limited size. Me too, Nancy, but I kind of understand why they don't because when you do the full size, there's not much room for the registration marks. So I guess if design space made it so that larger than eight and a half by 11 sheets could do print and cut, that would make a difference. But I just don't know how many printers have that, but I agree that would be nice. Hey, Kayla, I'm happy you're able to join us. Let me grab this print. All right, so this is showing a lot darker than it is, but this is the design we're going to use. And I am gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put you all down so you can see what I'm doing here on the table. I'm gonna take off my sheet. And I have done a ton of crafting today and it looks like some of my hair has decided to stick to my cutting mat. Come on. There we go. Depending on how sticky this is, I might go get a different mat. So I do want to make sure. Oops. Another thing to be aware of is you want to have, this is the same no matter what, if you're using printable HDV or printable vinyl, you want to make sure that you have your paper as close to the top on the horizontal, the horizontal and the uh, vertical axis so that the uh, Cricut can read the sensor marks. So let me move everything out of the way and I'll move my Cricut over here so you all can see what I'm doing. And my drink. Okay. So I'm just gonna move my Cricut over here. Move my star wheels back. I was cutting some chipboard today and I had to move those over. Okay. So we're gonna just go ahead and load this into the machine. Also, I have a fan going because it gets super hot in my craft room. Is there a lot of feedback or noise? Like, can you guys hear the fan going or is it okay? Let me know. Uh, Kristen said, I'd be happy if we could put the paper in a spot other than the top corner for print and cut. It would be nice if we could pick where we wanted to put the paper. I agree with that. And thank you, Kristen. I think this design will look really fun with this like horse shirt with this like not rustic I don't know, like faded shirt this is we're going to be using it's called comfort colors this is a shirt that Threadsy sent me but I'm actually really happy with it it's been super good quality it's really stretchy which is nice which I need so I'm excited to try this shirt out Nancy says, not sure if it's my computer, but you keep freezing. No fan noise and I don't hear anything. Yay, this is going to save my sanity in the summertime when we do our live craft because my craft room, while well, this is cutting, gets can get very, very hot here in Arizona. So while this is going, it doesn't take very long, I am going to move this heat press over so I can show everyone how this works too. Okay, so with your heat press, once you have it plugged in, you're going to just turn the power on. And then we have our settings set here for 350 for 30 seconds. If it was not set, so mode, you can set your own preset. So let's say you work with a whole bunch of like easy. You can set to the same time it takes time and temp time and temp settings so you would just go through that if you have a new one you just go ahead and click settings and you just do up or down to change the temperature and then just hit settings again to change the time and settings a third time to have it go and it is going to come up to heat so i'm going to move this over 
Let me know if you have any questions on the um, on this heat press, how it works, or anything like that. Um, I'll try to go more into detail on using it in today's video. But I am going to just double check. Like I said, I don't ever have really have any issues with this, but it's good to check to make sure that this prints. So see right there. Oh, there we go. It's coming up smooth, so I'm going to go ahead and just unload this. I'll move my machine over. Let me go back into the design space and just finish our project so I can turn my machine off. And then, all right, so we have our, our design cut. I'm going to go ahead and take it off my mat. And then what did I do with the cover sheet? There it is. Wow. You can see how, how not sticky the mat is because my cover sheet is not even sticking to it. All right. There we go. Nancy says, no volume. I'm wondering if it's your computer, Nancy. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Um, I can check to see if there's a volume issue. Um, when you design these, do you flatten the image? Um, yes, you do need to flatten the image. I forgot to mention that, Kristen. Great point. But you do need to flatten it. If it goes, if you have it, when you put it into Design Space as a print and cut image, it should be flattened already. But if you're using an image from Design Space or an SVG, make sure to flatten it before you send it to cut. Um, Kayla said, I hated printable HTV the first time I tried it. I had a bad batch, got a brand new pack, and I was a total, yes. It really is so easy to use, as you can see here, as I'm just weeding this away. That it's very, very easy to use. I am going to go through, and I can't remember how I, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. But I am bummed because there is so much white on this. Okay, I'm going to try to cut it again and see if we can't get a good one. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Can you see? Oh, you can't see. Let's do this. I don't have any markers here. Anyways, I'm not going to be able to show you because it's white, but there is a lot of white on here. So I'm going to go back in and we're going to Oh, we're going to throw our mouse across the table is what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the design space. And we are going to cut this again. Let's see. And I don't this. Well, no. Uh -oh. Okay. Here's another thing, too, I want to show you that I just messed up on. So see right there. Oops, there it is. I just peeled that away. So when you are weeding your design, you need to be very careful that you don't weed away the ink. I'm just want, I'm going to have to reprint this anyway, but I'm wondering if there's a way that we can salvage it because the print then cut is so far off on this. Here, I'll show you. I'll peel it since we're not going to use this one. I'll just peel this piece off and you'll be able to see it. Okay, come on. Come on. So you can see the white along there. So if we were to press this like this, anywhere where there's that white, you're going to get white on your shirt. So it says buffering. Let's see if we could turn off. I don't think that that would matter, but I'll turn the fan off and see if that helps. So I am just, you know, we are going to re, because we're good on time. We're only 419. I am going to undo that offset because we don't really need it. And we are going to try to do a calibration again for print then cut. I need to go load regular printer paper in. Also, we're going to try, have you, do you guys know, let me get my keyboard so I can type this up. Have you guys seen the tip where the on Cricut's website? So if you Google um, Cricut print and cut calibration, 
there is a print and cut sheet on Cricut's website, and that gives you a better chance of lining up. You just scroll all the way down to the bottom, and it says calibration new, and it prints that. So I'm going to go print that really quick. Let me load my printer paper in, and then you, if I think you guys were here, some of you were here, set so you can actually see me talking instead of my keyboard. I think you were here, was it our craft challenge or after? But we did a print and cut calibration before too. So we're just gonna do another one. Let me go get some printer paper loaded and I'll be right back. So let me know in the comments if you've done a print and cut calibration before or if this is your first time. And Kristen says, it's funny how you said about bleed issues. This has been, it's been the reverse for me. You're having to turn bleed off. It's so weird how that works, right? Like, I don't understand how we all have the same machines. Well, not the same, but should be the same system. And yet some people have different results than others. So let's go ahead and we're just printing our calibration sheet. I'm going to get a new blue cutting mat while we wait for that so that I can use that instead of this green cutting mat. So give me a second for that too. Our heat press is, yes, I know, I hear you. Our heat press is up to heat. So give me one second for that cutting mat too. Okay, so this is what the print and cut calibration sheet has. Okay, um, so this is what it looks like. We are going to just put it down on our mat here. I'm gonna keep my keyboard up, so I am going to need it. Right here. But again, you want to align it as close to the center or like to the points here, because you're going to need that to be perfect so that your machine can read the sensor marks. Okay. So now it's telling us that we just need to load our paper in. That's what we're gonna do. And it is going to cut around the squares first, and then it'll cut along the lines. And you just need to tell Design Space which one is closest to center cut. Let's see. And it seems like every time the camera focuses, it freezes in Novellum. Dang it! Okay, we are gonna figure out the camera issue before next week. I think we're going to switch from using a webcam to a different camera um, so that we don't have the focus in and out issues. And Kristen says, yes, she's had to calibrate before. Um, Kayla says, I've never been able to use bleed. It always looks terrible. Mine has been like hit and miss with the bleed. Sometimes it looks good. Sometimes it doesn't. So um, it's kind of hope and pray. I do usually, if it, I'm using a new, um, like a new brand of printable HTV or printable vinyl, I will do a test cut on um, just regular printer paper to see what the design looks like with the bleed. So I'm not wasting paper. So Nancy says she had to do a calibration yesterday. It seems like it's something that's happening quite often. So if you've never done a calibration before, I'll angle you down so you can see what we're doing. Right now, it has it's just gone around the square, and then it's going to ask you, does the cut line touch the printed line all the way around? Ours does not, so I'm gonna click no. And now what it's going to do is it's going to cut individual lines all along the top where, where these lines are, and it's going to ask us which one is closest to center. So that is what it is doing now, so we'll take a look 
here in just a second. Thankfully, calibration only takes maybe five minutes at most, so it's something that can be done fairly quickly. It's just frustrating when you have to do it. Now it's just going down and doing our x-axis. No, up and down is y-axis, is that right? And across is x-axis. I should know this going to school, but we just started another semester, and I'm not quite back into the routine of it. Okay, we are just about done, so I'm going to go ahead and open up Design Space again, and I am going to look here and see which one is closest to the center. So along the top, number nine is. Now this is going to be different for everybody's machine. So don't use the same settings that I am. Definitely check your machine to see which one is closest. And right here, it's a toss up between G and H. We're gonna go with H because it's a little bit closer, but still, this is an, the issue I had before too, where I just never had a clean in the center on one of the cuts. So we should be done. We're going to try print then cut again. Oh. So now it's going to have us load our mat into the machine again. I think now it's going to do, if I remember correctly, it's going to cut again to make sure that, let me angle you down, sorry. I'm looking at design space, so I forget that you're looking at my face. So what it's doing now is it's going to load again and it's going to cut around the rectangle to just see if it touches all the larger rectangle here to see if it touches all the, the um, corners. Kristen says, will there be a specific group for the spring craft challenge? Yes. So we are, um, I'm just putting the finishing touches on the group. I also have created a landing page on my blog um, that will have all the projects we're making. I'm creating the YouTube lives right now for them so that everything will be linked. So you'll see a whole bunch if you follow me on YouTube, which I'd love to have you subscribe if you are, but either late tonight or tomorrow morning, you are going to see a whole bunch of lives pop up with the projects that we're making. So that way everything's scheduled and you easily know where everything is as well as in the Facebook group and on my blog, I will have supply lists for Amazon, um, 143 vinyl, and then I'll link if they're like, most of the supplies you can get anywhere, um, Michael's, Target, Walmart, things like that. We are doing a, a Dollar Tree project that you can make and the last project is a really fun one. We're doing an upcycle project where we're gonna take a tank top and make it into a tote bag. So. We're doing a whole variety of projects for the uh, Cricut Craft Challenge. All right, let's see what Design Space says. And we are gonna cut it out. And now it's wanting to do the whole calibration again. All right, we're going to just let it do its thing and then we are gonna print again. So. Let me know if you were part of our Cricut Craft Challenge at the beginning of the year and um, what your thoughts on it were. I had so much fun. Um, we're doing things a little bit different. We kind of streamlined the process to make it easier for everyone. Um, but we're gonna have prizes every week. We're gonna do gift cards. Um, I'm trying to see if we can get some larger prize packages as well um, to go in addition to the gift cards. So it should be a whole lot of fun. Kayla says, do you have to sign up for it? Nope, it's totally free. Um, just make sure you follow me on Facebook. Um, and then I will post a link to the group on Facebook as well as the page on my blog. But if you follow me here on um, YouTube or subscribe, what's the correct term? Subscribe, I think. Um, if you're subscribed on YouTube, you'll see those lives pop up and I'll include all the information for each project on the live as well. So let's go back to design space. And we are going to try cutting this again. Let me find my little HTV and go load it in. If this doesn't work, if we can't get rid of the white, then we might just be making another tie-dye shirt because at least that one is an easy fix. But I would love to be able to make this fun design here. 
front fin cut. Everything's good. I'm just checking to make sure. And it's not letting me flatten it. Usually when you flatten items, you have to have two layers. And since I don't have two layers, it's not letting me flatten it. But hold on. We are going to cheat the system a little bit. I am going to add a second one in with the same dimensions. Center it. And then see if that helps. And then we can flatten it. Okay. Okay except then it's only going to cut out, well, where did the other one go? See, I tried a test project, but it was a different test project, I think. No, I don't want to flatten it because I want those lines to be cut out. Um, so if you flatten, if you flatten a design, it will cut just around the edges, but I want these lines to be cut too so that you can see the shirt through it. So I'm not going to flatten this one and we're just going to hope that it works well and that that calibration worked. Okay, so we have our design on our mat. We didn't mirror it. If you are just tuning in, we had some issues with our alignment on our first print and cut. So I just um, did a print and cut calibration and we are going to try to cut it again. If this one doesn't work, then we are going to just do the round um, smiley face design so I can show you how to print everything. So I'm changing my paper type now to the matte presentation paper and the print quality from normal to best. And we are going to print. So give me just a second for that to print. I'll get cut up on comments. Um, could you do a negative offset? Because we're going to open up another design space window and try that and see what happens. But I'm still thinking with the offset because I want each individual layer to print. Come on, why aren't we printing? It says we're spooling, of course. It wouldn't be a Friday night craft if we didn't have some sort of technical issues, right? So we're gonna go back into our original cut. Send to printer. The correct printer, mine always defaults to my sublimation printer, so I have to make sure that I change it um, because this shirt definitely will not look good with sublimation. Okay, change our preferences one more time. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go in and see what a negative offset looks like and if that would make a difference. Um, sorry, Design Space is taking a minute. Yeah, so if you flatten it with an image behind it, it would cut around the outside. Let's see, where did that page, is this it? So it would cut like just all the way around, but I want it to cut here, because if we didn't cut here and just left the white, then the white would show up on the, sh on the shirt, which we don't want. Where the white is here is going to have the shirt come through it. So if you flatten an image, it's just going to cut around the perimeter, and we do want it to cut on the insides of it. Because let's see, I uh, flattened before and it cut out everything individually. Hmm. I don't know why it would do that. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a design, like, design space glitch um, because it, it does tend to happen. But you know what? We really can't complain because it's free design pro design program. So, all right, our design is done. Let's go ahead and we are going. I'm going to select my printer or my cut settings. So, also, if you missed the beginning of it, if you are Cutting on a maker, you want to use the rice paper setting. 
If you are cutting on Explore, you just use paper, like notebook paper or laser copy paper setting. Let me go get that print off the printer and we're gonna put it on our mat and see how it does. Okay, so we're doing the same project, same design. We're going to line it up as close as we can. I guess I'll angle you guys down so you can see what I'm doing. And we are going to send it over here to have it start cutting. The good news is, is our heat press is already up to temperature, so we don't have to worry about getting it up to temperature, which is the bonus. So this is just going to cut at our design. It looks like it should be, should be good. There's some bread there. Hmm. wonder what that is. Oh, I think it's part of that. We'll have to see when it cut, when it comes out. So while this is cutting, I, have to, I want to know what is your favorite material to use with your Cricut? Do you prefer vinyl? Do you prefer HTV? Do you like making paper projects? What if you could only craft with like one material ever? What one would you choose? Mine for sure would be HTV. I feel like it's so versatile and you can use it on just about anything. That's a whole lot easier to weave than vinyl. One of the projects we're going to do for um, the Spring Cricut Craft Challenge is making a uh, acrylic keychain, but I'll be showing you how to do reverse weeding on that. Um, I know that's a question that a lot of people have, and I've been testing out techniques and things like that. And I was up one night, I could not figure out the. I mean, I can figure out reverse weeding, but I kept getting it stuck on itself. Um, <laughs> I wasted an entire sheet of vinyl for a two-inch keychain. All right, doesn't look like we have. I want to make sure we didn't miss any comments. We're still not doing bad on time. We're only 37 minutes in. So the pressing part is really easy. We're just pressing at 350 for 30 seconds because this did take longer. I don't know if we'll do a second project. Let me know in the comments. Do you want to try to do a second shirt? I'll probably just do this smiley face again um, and try it with an easy press. Or do you want me to just do it on the heat press? Kristen says, I'd, I started with just paper, but I'm probably mainly vinyl. Yeah, I started practicing when I first, so I originally got a silhouette. That was my first vinyl cutter. Um, and I practiced a whole lot on paper too, because it was just, just easier and less expensive to mess up paper than vinyl. So, all right, we are done. So let me go ahead and angle this down. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my keyboard and my mouse again, because we don't need that anymore. Unload this. And we are going, instead of waiting on that, we'll just take it off. And then we're just going to peel away. Well, so far it looks good. It looks better than it did. Oh, I think the print and cut calibration worked. Yay! Let's see, if I have to cut that by hand, it might be hard. But what I'm going to do now, and it's kind of hard to see, is I'm going to go in, and I'm actually going to use it kind of like you do in Fusible Ink, so that I'm not using my weeding tool. I'm going to see if I can do that. I don't think I can. Let's see. We're going to just touch this here. Again, you want to be very careful to not scratch where you are going to keep your like the ink because it will scratch it, which I just did a little bit. I hope it doesn't affect it too much. But I'm just gonna go through and get rid of these settings. This rice paper cuts, the rice paper setting cuts this perfectly. Let's see if I'm missing anything. It's kind of hard to tell since the backing is white too. So let me see. All right, there's one there. Right here. I'm kind of just feeling along here too. Oh, there's one right there. And one right here. All right, because you can feel the difference. 
and one right there. I think that is it. Hold on, there's a little piece right here. I don't know exactly. What it is. There we go. Okay, so we have our design done. We don't have any more bleed issues. Yay! Um, Kristen, I'm just gonna kind of. Kristen says, looking forward to the reverse weeding lesson. I can't seem to wrap my brain around it. It's really easy once you figure it out, but Kristen, it took me a good couple hours to wrap my brain around it too. Um, and then, so because the design is in pieces, is that why you need the transfer mask? Yes. So this is going to be in several different pieces. So that is why I'm using the transfer mask. This piece up. Ooh, is this going to be big enough? It is. Look at that. How lucky is that? That I don't have to cut off. Here, one. Caleb says it's like the game operation. It totally is. Thankfully, I don't have a buzzer going off because man, that would be stressful. Okay. So when I'm using printable, or not printable, um, the heat transfer mask, I like, so you have the front, I like to turn it over and just peel the backer off only to about like, about that far. And then I can line this up here. And I had to get squeegee before. I'm gonna line this up here. And press down. And just slowly move this away. This is going to prevent any wrinkles from happening. Oh my goodness, this is like so close to the edge. So close. But it works. So I'm just going to press this down. I'm going to press on the back. Get rid of everything else. Now with this, let me move the drink here. We're going to move the heat press over. And I am going to move my fan because it's kind of in the way. But I want you to be able to see how, how to do this. One reason I love this swing away heat press is it literally swings away like 360 degrees. So I can take this and I can take my shirt. And before we do anything, before I move this to preheat it, I am going to use, where did there it is? I'm going to use my lint roller, and when you're using your lint roller, make sure that you clean it every time because you don't want any of those fibers to go on your shirt. So we're just going to lint roll our shirt. Any fibers on top of it. And then I am going to line my shirt up here. When you are doing a shirt that has a thicker collar like this one, let me scoot this over so you all can see. Try to get, and it might be easier to show you this way. Try to get that collar not on the mat. So like, I don't know if you can see it, but our collar is completely off of our, here you can see it. See how it's hanging off here? So that's not going to affect the press at all. This is really important when you're using a material that requires a lot of pressure. Um, even this little bit, so we don't have it right here, but if you had it like this, this little bit extra um, isn't getting the full pressure on your HTV and it can affect it. So if you have a thicker collar, make sure you get that all the way off. We are going to just preheat this for five seconds. And the timer starts as soon as you put the handle down. Okay, so we're five seconds. Oh, I guess I should also show you, if you need to adjust the pressure, just do this. It shows you if you go left, it goes down for more pressure. And if you go right, it goes up for less pressure. So it's set to like medium firm pressure when you get it. Um, but for this, you do want to adjust it down so you have more pressure. So, okay, come on. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to peel this backer away. Oh, Oops. We're not fully stuck on the heat transfer mask, so we're going to just press it a little bit harder. And just peel this away. So we're just peeling the backer away from the heat transfer mask. Come on. 
one is not wanting to come. Okay. So if you have that issue where you can't get it to stick, go ahead and press down again, but then start in a different corner. Sometimes if you peel it at a different angle or a different corner, it makes all the difference. See, like that. Easy peasy. And just make sure to go slow so that you don't get any wrinkles. And so it is sticking a little bit like our paper, our backing is sticking a little bit to that. So that is not a problem. I mean, it is a problem, but we can fix it. I'm going to go and I'm going to just lift this up. Let's see. Oh, we're having this issue here. Let's get this. I'm just going to get the whole thing off and then I will work on getting the remnants of the paper off. Oh my goodness. It is Struggle Bus Express right now. Okay, come on. You all can see. Okay. So that was a nightmare. Really, usually it's not this hard. So, but if you have that, it's totally fine. All you have to do is just peel this back, but you do want to make sure that you get all of this off because this will not, if you have this on, it will not press. So we are gonna just take our time. If you need, I wanna be very careful too that, so I think I did just nick that. I'll show you what I did. You want to be careful using a weeding tool. I don't, I've never had this issue with this printable HTV. And I'm wondering if this one's not even going to be salvageable. We got the print and cut issue figured out, but then this is not wanting to work. Holy cannoli, guys. We're working through all of the issues, are we not? Has anybody else had this issue before? Let me catch up on the comments. Um... That's what my one whole pack did, except I didn't get any of the back off the image. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get be able to get everything off. I wonder if I can spray it. Do I have my spray bottle in here? So sometimes when you're doing um, sublimation on vinyl, you'll have this, and then you can just spray it. It comes off. So let me go get my spray bottle, and we're going to try that. Give me just one second, guys. Okay, so I have a spray bottle. We're just gonna spray where this paper is. We are then gonna have to wait for it to dry before we press it, but that is not fixing it. Dang it. So Kayla, you've had this issue before too. I have never had this with, and it lit well. I guess you can't really tell. And that water, that was not a good idea. Just so you guys know, again, we're, we're experimenting here, but you can see how water Affected that, affecting the color. So don't do that on printable HPV TV. Don't add water. We're going to try printing third times the charm. I am going to move this shirt off. We do not need to, when we are going to press it again, we don't need to preheat it again. Um, when you preheat your shirt, you're basically just getting the moisture out of it. So if we got the moisture out of it, it will be fine. But we do need to cut our design again. If you are still here crafting with me, God bless you. You guys are amazing. I don't know why we are having so many issues tonight, but we're going to try this again. Third time is the charm. I see these craft nights are going to be an hour long, and then I create easy projects. Well, easy-ish. And then they don't work the first time. So Go ahead and we are going to go put this on our printer again and reprint. At least the calibration issue was fixed, right? Okay. We're going to leave our bleed on, turn on our system dialog, make sure I have my ink jet printer selected and we're good to go i'm also thinking that maybe i'm not going to save this live 
mean, I'll save it for maybe a week or so, but do another video um, without all these issues. So it's not an hour long video on how to use printable HTV. Let me know what you think. Should I do another video, like an actual YouTube video that's not a live going over the main points or should we just keep up the live? All right, we're going to print now, I believe. Roseanne, hello. Yes, you're still live with us, Roseanne. We are having so many struggles. On, well, we, I am having so many struggles on today's live. So it's been taking me a minute. Yes, the ink ran. At least it's always technical. That's true. That's true that it's technical issues. Well, I don't know. This is, well, would you consider that issue a technical issue or a crafter issue? Because I feel like that just might be a me error. We'll see. I'm going to try not pressing as hard with the scraper tool when I'm using the um, heat transfer mask to see if that helps. Just so everyone knows, I'm still just cutting page one of my giant sunflower. Oh, my gosh. Kristen, that makes me feel better. I mean, I know that yours isn't technical issues. I know it's just a super um, intricate not advanced, intricate, that's the right word, right? Intricate design. So we're printing this, gonna open up design space. Oh, I still have that second window open and it's distracting me. There we go. And we'll change the paper, the print settings to rice paper. Done. Get that print from the printer. All right, fingers crossed, y'all. Third time's a charm that this is going to work. And the good news is I am I am doing marinated chicken for dinner, and so all I have to do is throw it on the grill. So I am happy about that. I prepared for that. Okay, so we're just lining it up again so that it is straight. We're gonna load it in the printer, and we are gonna cross our fingers that everything prints well, and then we can get it to come off of the backer and onto the heat transfer mask. So. Roseanne says, no problem. It helps to see issues belong to everyone. Yes, yes. And lots of, lots of issues belong to me. I, I have my fair share, if not more, than issues. Um, Kayla says, don't delete it. It would have been nice to see others have the same issue I did. I gave up on Fredway TV for months after my first go. I remember we talked about that because what was the, was it Valentine's Day shirts that you made, Kayla, finally that they worked on or was it St. Patrick's Day? But I remember having that discussion with you and you're like, I hate Fredway TV. I'm like, it's not bad. It's not us. Um, Roseanne says, my sunflower did not turn out. I had cut it before the tutorial. So the middle is out of proportion. Oh, dang it. And Kayla says, I need to get my shirt pressed to enter the contest for my mystery box. The week got away from me. I still need to do that, too. I can't. Well, I'm sure I could enter the contest, but I'm not going to enter the contest. That's not fair. But I still need to make a shirt. There have been so many cute shirts that everybody has done. I love them. I'm trying to think who it was. Somebody took made hearts with the DIY Alex Olgren. That was really cute with a different type of the shiplap and woods and things like that. Okay. Fingers crossed, y'all, this works. I'm really excited to see how it looks on this shirt because I think the colors are going to pop. So hopefully we can actually see it happen. Oh. All right. So Alex, is she doing, I need to go look at my schedule again, but she's doing them Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? I love her tutorials. Seriously, if you don't, if you're not following DIY Alex, which I think all of us are, but if you're not, Follow her on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and all the places because she has the best tutorials. There's so many things that she's helped me to learn. Um, also with the reverse weeding uh, acrylic keychain, we're going, going to be doing UV resin too. And I learned everything I know about UV resin for her. So that video, I think that's either our first week or our second week. Um, but that will be, we'll be going over a whole lot of information on that video, which is good. Okay. Moment of truth. I'm going to angle you down so you can see what I'm doing again. I'm going to peel this away. Let's go ahead and get this off of our mat, though. 
Looks like it's still good, so we don't have the issue we had the first time where our bleed where we have the white. So now I'm just going to go through the center pieces and weed those out. Again, being very careful that I am not pressing my weeding tool into the vinyl that is going to stay on the shirt. Okay, let me see. I think we got all of the pieces. We're not going to be so lucky this time. I am going to have to cut a piece of that heat transfer mask down. Oh, great. What did I do with the heat transfer mask, everyone? Oh, there it is. Okay, let's close this up. We don't need this. Cut this down to size. Actually, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use my rotary cutter because this is going to make it easier. So I'm just going to. All right, that worked out a whole lot easier. Cut a little bit of the paper off, but that's okay. rolled up tight again in a bit. We're going to go ahead and I'll just cut that off. And I'm going to peel the backer off of the heat transfer mask. Come on. There we go. Line her up. Oops. And then I am going to just pull this and keep it tight so that we don't have already having some bubbles. Come on. Come on. Let's go back. Okay. Come on. Uh oh. I don't want to go back too much because we're taking off some of the ink. Okay, we're going to just live with the bubbles that we have and we will press them out. Okay, I also want to show you guys because I went a little crooked, so part of the design is not on there, but that is not going to affect it. I'm also going to just move this down here so I can work with our shirt. As I mentioned, like we already preheated the shirt, so we don't have to preheat it again. We're going to make sure that our collar is off of the pressing mat so that we don't have it interfere with it. Okay, come on. Okay, we have a little bit of the issue that we had. Okay, we're going to peel from up here. But at least it's coming off versus before it was not the paper. Okay. We have some wrinkles. We can fix it. Come on. I don't want to press with I don't want to press this down harder because I don't know what is causing the backer to stick to the HTV. So I'm kind of just, we're going to play with it on the backer once we get it. You see, we're having that again right there where the backer, this backer is sticking to the printable HTV. So we're just being very, going slow. 
steady. Come on. Y'all, if you've never used printable HGV before, I promise it's not this difficult. We are just having a tough time tonight with this, but I think we've got it fixed. Okay. So we do have a few wrinkles, but we can fix those. All right. Okay. So this is, you'll see there, we don't have any of the white, which is perfect. But we, you can see these wrinkles here. We do want to get rid of those because they will press into the design. So I'm going to hold together my stab and grab tweezers so they're not super sharp. I'm just going to lift this up, pull it back to where the wrinkles are, and then just softly press out the wrinkles. Try to at least. You might have to peel this whole thing back, the whole piece back a little bit, but that's okay. Come on. And if you are commenting, I will check the comments in just a bit. Okay, we're going to just get that wrinkle out and just kind of pull it tight. Line it back up with where it needs to go. Press down. Let me get this wrinkle out. Oops. So we're going to lift this side up again. We're just pressing the wrinkles out. So I like being able to show that, you know, if you have wrinkles or issues, guess what? The project is not totally doomed. There are ways to fix it. So let's see if we can't just press these out here. No, it's not working. Okay. So these smaller ones here on the edges we can. But the bigger ones up there we can. I'm going to press this one up, this one down. This whole I think this whole top piece is gonna have to come off, which is gonna be okay. We'll figure it out. Kayla, I'm wondering if I got, because this is a new pack of printable HTV, I'm wondering if I got a bad batch too. Okay. We have some wrinkles, but I, I'll look at this really quick. I think we're going to be okay. Let's get these ones out right here in the yellow because they're more noticeable. They're not as noticeable in the pink. But we'll see. Let me, where did my mouse go? Get caught up on comments. Well, I'll get caught up on comments once we press this. Let me get this shirt. Ah, the shirt centered. We're gonna put our design three fingers down right here. And then we're going to measure it. Where's my ruler? There it is. So we're just gonna measure it here. Five and a quarter. And let's move the cricket over. Five and a quarter. Fantastic. So now we can just put this on our heat press and make sure that you are using medium or not medium, firm pressure. And you'll, there, let's see. Okay. I'm trying to get it. So there we go. Okay. So once we have this in there, we're just going to push this down and our timer is going to start. Again, we're doing 350. Sorry, it's backwards for 30 seconds. Let's get everything cut up. Okay. I missed a whole lot of comments. I wouldn't want to pick the winner either, Christy, because they all are so good. Um, Roseanne, I can't wait to see yours. Kristen, I know I've seen yours, but I can't remember because I've seen so many of them now. Um, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and a few on Friday for Mystery Box. Okay. So we're going to move this over, and this is going to let me move this whole thing. This is going to be a cool peel, so I am going to just swing this away. And I think, oops, okay. We have a little, they did not want to stick up at the top. 
So I'm going to press it again. I don't want to overheat it, but I want to make sure that, that top piece gets the pressure. So I'm just going to press it for like, I don't know, 10 seconds. That was our 10 seconds. Okay, that looks like it fixed it. Okay, so I guess I could, I should have shown you what I was talking about before I did that. But the top, let me move this bad one out of the way. Okay. So the top up here was not fully attached, so I just pressed it again. Um, I think it's going to turn out beautifully. We're going to let it cool off, and I'm going to get caught up on comments. Um, Kayla says that nobody's used the SG, SVG she's used. Um, yes. You guys are all so good at sharing Alex's dates. You're awesome. Um, I think we may have an extra one as well. I don't know. Acrylic signs the 26th, acrylic coasters April 29th, and the tiered set the third. The tiered set's the one I'm most excited about. All right, okay, so this is cooled off. We're gonna, well, not completely cooled off, and I just threw my scavenger and tweezers at myself. I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way though, and I'm just gonna let it finish cooling here. But even though we had so many issues, I think this is going to turn out beautifully. I love it already. Okay, so we did have a few issues on the purple. But overall, and the shirt is kind of rustic, so it kind of gives it a rustic look. Sorry, it looks, that's not sideways. It looks sideways on the camera. But up here. I think it turned out pretty good. You can see the fibers of the shirt. Can you? Yeah. You can see the fibers of the shirt in the vinyl. So you know as they're good. We don't have any of the white outline anywhere. I mean, we do have white up here where I messed up, but the outline is off. I think it's a pretty fun design. And like I said, the shirt is kind of like a faded shirt anyway. So I'm not super where I mean, I'm bummed that we had those issues up there, but I think it turned out. Good for all the issues that we had. For all the issues we had, it turned out so good. And we are way past it out. And I am, I am a mess, hot mess express for sure. But as you can see, printable HTV, I promise, is so easy. I didn't make it look easy, but you did see that if you have issues with bubbling or things like that, um, it's fixable and your project isn't ruined. So oops, there we go. Come on, back into focus camera. There we go. All right, I had a blast tonight. I am sorry that it took me so long to get the project done, but this was so much fun. Thank you all, Kristen, Roseanne, Kayla, anyone else who is with us that's not commenting, thank you for sticking out with me for this whole live. It was a long one, but I will make sure to post all of the details for the Spring Cricket Craft Challenge either super late tonight or tomorrow. I am going to get the live scheduled, so if you're subscribed to Tastely Frugal here on YouTube, You'll get those notifications tomorrow that I have all the lives scheduled. So you'll know what projects we're making. Um, and I'll have the supply list of all of those lives as well as on Facebook and then on my website. So how, let's make, let me see if I cut up and everything. Okay, this is, I'm just patiently waiting for my bedtime for my kiddos so I can get it done. Me too, but it's only five o'clock here. So we've got like three or four more hours before my kids get go to bed. But I will be doing a whole lot, a uh, whole lot more crafting tonight when the kids go to bed, as well as updating the website and everything like that. So thank you all so much for being a part of this live. I had a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of issues, but it was a blast. So enjoy the rest of your Friday and I will see you next week.